What do you consider art? Um, I think it could be really anything that an individual takes and put a lot of time into, um, create something to either make income from themselves or maybe a hobby. Um, eventually the final product, it'll, it'll probably have some kind of emotional, emotional aspect to it. It'll bring out emotions for people and the people that make it especially are going to be very proud of it and it can be really anything like a, like a picture or music or maybe even um, scenery from a video game or, or really anything that someone creates and brings out emotions. Um, something appealing that someone has made uh, that looks beautiful or is just a work of art, I guess. I think art is something you enjoy and something that's beautiful. Well, it's pictures and the artists draw and stuff and they paint and stuff like that. What do you think traditional Appalachian art is? It's probably more focused on making stuff out of objects or painting stuff, um, painting maybe scenery of uh, stuff you would see around Appalachian areas. <laughs> uh, other than art made by people from the Appalachians, I have no clue. Um, I don't know, there's, I guess, all the albums in your mom's house. It's people in these mountains around here that, that handcraft stuff, and you got all forms of different art in here. Stuff they glue out, or paint, or stuff they find, and they turn it into art. Traditional Appalachians think of more things being art than what I normally would. Canning, soap making, and gardening, along with liquor making, these don't sound like art forms to me, but they do fall under Webster's definition of being useful and beautiful. Appalachian people put a lot of hard work into these arts, and they are very proud of them. While on Facebook one day, I stumbled across a little gold mine, a Facebook page called Appalachian Americans. People on this page are spread out across the whole Appalachian region in the 13 states. While on this page one day, I asked the question, do any of you still practice Appalachian arts and crafts? And their responses were phenomenal. When asked why they still practice these arts, many stated that they learned from their parents or grandparents how to do them and it was just a second nature. Some stated that the art forms were just too amazing to be forgotten in the new centuries. While messaging these people later on, several told me that their parents and grandparents learned these skills out of necessity. They grew up having the same morals and values instilled in them, so they learned all of these skills, including cooking, sewing, and not wasting. Paul Hopkins and his family are Appalachian to the core. His sister and mother-in-law teach quilt making at their local library. His sister-in-law is also an archivist for all the local history. 
His daughter is in the process of establishing a new museum while working for an organization that works to preserve and promote the culture, history, and arts of Appalachia. His brother is an Appalachian book writer. He received the inspiration for his first book, Spirits in the Field, from when a new road forced his family to move their family cemetery. Paul and his wife are avid collectors of Appalachian arts, crafts, and antiques. The family tradition of Appalachia has led a great life for the Hopkins family. In 1970, Sarah Starr and Grace Foster were hired by the federally funded Anderson County Community Action Commission to enrich the souls and the pocketbooks of the low-income people in Anderson County as a War on Poverty program. Today, the center is known as Appalachian Arts Crafts Center. They are located outside of Norris, Tennessee, and they are a nonprofit arts and crafts center. They hold classes in studios and they allow the artists to profit by selling their art in the galleries. The center operates exclusively via volunteers. They use over 4,000 volunteer hours a year to keep the center running. Crafts made here are some of what we have already seen in this film, including quilts, weaving, woodworking, basket making, pottery, jewelry making, photos of the Appalachian areas, and much more. Over the years, the facility has become a highly recognized educational facility. They have spaces for quilting, weaving, a pottery studio, and classroom spaces for group learning. With the change in times, their original mission statement has also changed to promote the Appalachian artists through education and sales. The language may have changed, but the vision of the founders has remained intact. Senior centers usually have days where the senior citizens can make arts in their free times. Reconnecting with the Appalachian culture, or even learning about the Appalachian culture if they aren't Appalachian themselves, would be a great leisure activity. For older adults, making traditional Appalachian arts and crafts could be a thing of the past due to their chronic illnesses. Visiting museums would be a great way for the older generation to have a nostalgic moment of their younger years. Museums such as the Howard Finster Museum, or the Museum of Appalachia, or the Appalachian Arts Crafts Center would all be great places to go.